a human in an urban environment, doing the things humans do. Living in a city in the United States, a natural human habitat, just like all cities in the US. But are things really as they seem? What you're seeing is not real. You're just seeing a kind of image. You're falling for it because you've never seen anything else. You know, Washington has Rock Creek Park. It has, it is, it's surrounded by rivers. Uh, nature has been kind to us, but this is a most unnatural island unto itself in our country. Aristotle thought that politics was natural to us because we have speech, and speech enables us to talk about what's better and worse, and that would be pointless unless there was something we could do about it. And the only way to do about it is in a group that can control its own destiny. This is a planned city. They planned on everything except full and equal rights for the people who live here. No taxation without representation 200 years of exploitation in the capital of this nation no representation in the capital of this nation 200 years of exploitation give the people their right to vote Washington is a simulated democracy my name is Kevin Kiger I'm the communications director for DC Vote you know, zoos are a great place to take a look at freedom. And you look at them and they look like they're in their natural state. But when you take a look back and you see the bars or you see the glass that's keeping them inside of a cage or inside of an enclosed space, while it looks like they're in their natural state, they're trapped. <laughs> My name is Jeffrey Ryman. I'm a professor of philosophy. I teach at American University here in Washington, D.C. Natural is one of these terms I think that's uh, a little tricky. I mean, in one sense, uh, everything in nature is natural. Okay? The only thing that's not natural is what's supernatural. So here you have a city where everybody, regardless of race, creed, color, station, if you happen to live here, when you cross the district line, you lose your rights. You no longer have a voting representative on the floor of the House. Now, you got me, poor dears. <laughs> but, and I vote in committee, but I cannot do that which every American would believe uh, is emblematic of citizenship. And that is vote on the House floor. Vote on whether your taxes go up or go down. Vote on whether you go to war or not can't do that. The congresswoman called me uh, in light of the fact that we were pushing so hard for voting rights for Iraq. My name is Andy Shalal. This is the Langston Room in the Busboys and Poets uh, restaurant, cafe, bookstore. The fact that I, living here in the United States, am able to vote in the Iraqi elections. The fact that my children, who were born here, just by virtue of me being an Iraqi are able to vote in the Iraqi elections, and yet we cannot vote here in D.C. seemed absurd. D.C. voters get to vote for me as their senator, but when I go up to that building behind me, I don't get to vote for them on their behalf. My name is Paul Strauss. I'm the elected United States Senator for the District of Columbia. Really, all I can do is prepare statements that they may or may not print in various hearing records. I can talk to members informally, but I don't have the power of debate. I can't introduce legislation. Uh, I can't filibuster bills, and I certainly can't vote. There are six, there are at least six countries around the world that basically copied the American Constitution when they set up their, their system of government. In doing so, they copied in the district clause. They have all fixed the problem, all of them. 
There's no other democracy on the planet that denies the people living in the federal capital a vote. The Chinese pandas at the National Zoo have as much right to representation in the U.S. Congress as any resident in the District of Columbia. Imagine you pass your own local laws. This is the essence of what it means to be an American local control. Uh, different strokes for different folks. You live in Texas, maybe you like to carry guns. We live in a big city, we don't. So we have pretty tough gun laws. So somebody from Indiana uh, comes for the fourth time and says, I move uh, to abolish the gun laws of the District of Columbia. Kids would have been able to carry guns to school. I would have been able to have guns on me right now and sell them to you, no questions asked. Well, who are you to move anything about the District of Columbia? You don't pay taxes in the District of Columbia. You don't vote in the District of Columbia. Makes me feel mad. <laughs> angry. I want to say, I want them to hear me. I want to say something, but they won't listen, so forgive them. I think it's, it's deeply unfair. I think that as taxpayers and as Americans and as people that live within the nation's capital, we are just as entitled as everyone else within our country to representation in the Senate and in the House. I would feel deprived. I'm disappointed. I never knew that. No. What really concerns me is real estate appreciation. It's a great totally injustice. Not fair. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Taxation without representation. <laughs> I was 18 when I came here. I had all kinds of dreams about the state of our democracy, about uh, what it would be like. It never occurred to me that I would have less rights as an American by moving to the capital of our nation than I did as a New Yorker. What I have is a wonderful gift, something to fight for that is perfectly obvious. So it's got to happen, and it's going to happen. <laughs>